Hello, in this video we're going to look at improper integrals. Um, there are three different cases we'll look at where a function is continuous at a finite number to infinity. This will be our setup. We'll have an integral from that number to infinity of our function. We'll replace infinity with a, a letter B usually. You can use any letter, but you'll want to let that B go to infinity so you'll just convert it to a limit of a integral with a lower and an upper limit uh, case two is if you have to go to negative infinity but the right of your graph is continuous and stops at a finite number on the right this will be the way the integral looks negative infinity to a finite number we're gonna let a approach negative infinity and so then your integral will look more doable, look more like a definite integral, but you will have a limit as one of the two approaches infinity. And if you happen to have a function continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity, then the integral from negative to positive infinity of your function can be split up at a convenient value C that's a real number. Uh, the improper integrals in 1 and 2 converge if the limit exists, otherwise they diverge. And in part 3, the improper integral on the left will diverge if either one of the two on the right diverge. Let's jump into some examples. We're going to evaluate the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x dx. You're not required to graph any of these. If you do, then we're gonna focus on the part of the graph from zero to infinity and determine whether that area underneath has a finite value or not. It's actually possible for an unbounded graph to have a finite area, and as we'll see in the next few examples. All right, so what we'll do is we're gonna replace infinity with the letter B, but we're gonna make sure we take the limit as B approaches infinity. That way we can look out way out here on the right end. The antiderivative of E to the negative X is negative E to the negative X evaluated at B and zero, B and zero. Limit as B approaches infinity Remember that this can be written as negative e over positive b. Well, as b gets larger and larger, your new, or excuse me, your denominator gets larger and larger. So negative one divided by a number that gets larger and larger approaches zero. e to the zero is one. So this actually has a finite value one. Therefore, we can say that the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x dx converges. The area under this unbounded region has a finite value of one. In our second example, we're gonna integrate from zero to infinity, one over x squared plus one. So from zero to infinity, one over x squared plus one has a little bit of a hump here. It actually looks like the right half of a bell curve. Let's replace infinity with B, but we're gonna let the limit of B go to infinity. The antiderivative of one over X squared plus one is arctangent of X, evaluated at B and zero, B and zero. The limit as B goes to infinity. For arctangent, this is the graph of arctangent. As the x values get larger and larger, your graph approaches the horizontal asymptote pi over two. So the arc tangent of b as b goes to infinity will be pi over two. The arc tangent of zero is zero. Pi minus, excuse me, pi over two minus zero is pi over two. Therefore, this unbounded region has a finite area of pi over two and we can say that the original problem is a, an improper integral that converges.
let's look at an example of an unbounded region that does not have a finite area. We're going to investigate the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, replace infinity with a b, but we're going to let the limit of b go to infinity. On the graph, we have the portion of the graph of 1 over x that matches up with 1 to infinity. It's this unbounded region. The antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x. You can actually use parentheses because um, these are all positive values, 1 to infinity. It doesn't matter. You can keep the absolute value. The limit as b approaches infinity, when we sub in b and 1, natural log, remember the way its graph looks down here at the bottom. This is the graph of natural log x. As you get larger, the larger and larger these values get, natural log doesn't quit going up, so it actually goes to infinity. The natural log of 1 is 0. So we have the natural log of b minus natural log of 1. As b goes to infinity, we have infinity minus 0, which is infinity. This has infinite area. We can't put a number to it. And we'll say that the original problem diverges. Let's look at one continuous for all values of x, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x. That graph is given over here to the right. It looks like your bell curve. It peaks at 1 half. Um, since it's an improper integral, we're going to just look at it as cut this in half. So if you cut it in half, you just let C be a convenient. And this is case three from the first slide. Let C be zero. That way you can look at it one half at a time. The limit as A approaches negative infinity and stopping at zero plus the limit as b goes to positive infinity starting at zero that covers this half. So effectively we have split this bell curve into a left half and a right half. The antiderivative for e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x is arctangent of e to the x. And we did one like this back in our um, inverse trig integrals section. Um, now let's plug in a 0 and an a, arctangent of e to the 0 minus arctangent of e to the a as a approaches negative infinity, plus on the second one we're going to plug in a b and a 0, arctangent e to the b, minus arctangent e to the zero and for this one we'll let b go to positive infinity. Back to our first limit, e to the zero is one, arctangent of one is pi over four because tangent of pi over four is equal to one. I'm gonna leave arctangent e to the a alone. I didn't want to do too much on one step. The limit as b approaches infinity of arctangent e to the b, I'm going to leave that the same. e to the 0 is 1, arctangent of 1 again is pi over 4. Now, let's think back to arctangent. This was just a courtesy sketch, we already looked at it. As a goes to negative infinity, now here's the graph of e, so as x goes to negative infinity, this graph approaches zero. What is arctangent of zero? It's zero. This first group goes to pi over four minus zero. Arctangent, now as b gets really large, so does e. 
So this effectively becomes arc tangent of infinity. Arc tangent as your values get larger and larger, you approach that horizontal asymptote pi over two. And so that's why there's a pi over two here. Pi over four, combining pi over four minus zero plus pi over two minus pi over four comes out to pi over two. At the very upper right, this unbounded region has a finite area. So just be very careful down here at the bottom to investigate your functions very carefully. Remember what it looks like to have e to a power, that's this graph. If x's get really small, you approach zero. If x's get large, so does the function. Once you determine how E is gonna behave, whether it's gonna be really large or really small, then you look at your arc tangent graph when values get small or large or if they're at zero. And then our last example, we're gonna look at one that has an infinite discontinuity, but this time we're gonna let that happen here where X is zero. One over the cube root of X actually has a full-on graph, looks like this one here at the bottom. It is discontinuous at zero, so that's called an infinite discontinuity because of the asymptote. We're only gonna investigate this from zero to one. So I, what I did was I took this part of the graph and I put that in the top right. So from zero to one, we have this shaded region. We're gonna to attempt to find the area. Now, because the function is continuous at one, we leave the one alone. It is not continuous at zero, and this portion of the graph, we approach zero from the right. That's where this zero with a plus sign comes in. So we're gonna replace zero with the letter A, but we're gonna have A approach zero from the right. The antiderivative for one over cube root of x, let's rewrite this as x to the negative one third. It makes it easier to find the antiderivative. You add one, you get two thirds. Dividing by two thirds is the same as multiplying by three halves. Evaluated at one and a, remembering that a is gonna approach zero from the right. Substitute in one and a, that's three halves, times one to the two thirds minus a to the two thirds. With a limit, you can pull your coefficient or scalar out, so that's why I pull the three halves out. The cube root of one squared is one. As a gets closer and closer to zero from the right, this becomes zero to the two thirds. Cube root of zero squared is zero. So this all in the bracket becomes a one. Three halves times one is three halves. And so we have an unbounded region with a finite area. This integral is convergent. I hope this video helps. Uh, reach out by phone or email. Swing by the office if you have questions. Ask in class. And this video wraps up unit two. And just check your web assign for the unit test and all the preceding homework assignments and reach out if you have questions.